Uh, my name is Philip Atfield. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Sequitur Labs. Um, the company was formed with a, a very, I'd say, broad a team, a team that's um, with a lot of broad experience and broad expertise. So from embedded system design all the way up to high-level software stacks. And what, we, what we've done is taken a look at security and trust from the perspective of modern uses of mobile devices or desktops or connected things, period. And taking that into consideration is we're looking at um, what's required to address problems today rather than problems as they were, say, 20 years ago. So think in terms of what's the real threat landscape look like now? What does it look like to manage a device today or manage an application or a system rather than assumptions that may not be valid anymore? So think in terms of anything that's connected. Um, people use the words attack surface. Any device that's connected to a network represents a potential threat. So whether it's a refrigerator, whether it's a mobile device, whether it's a tablet, PC, desktop, your television, anything that's con connected is potentially, is potentially the, the entry point of the problem. When you think of the information and how mobile devices are being used, or any device for that matter, there are, they're either our personal information or enterprise information. So think of it as being, it's an asset. The information that's on there, if it has any value to you personally, think what that means if you're an enterprise. It may be intellectual property, it may be financial, it may be personally identifiable in the case of something like a healthcare provider. Those are all, I mean, it's all exposure and all the surface. I'd say let's start at the top. The largest one would be the, you know, sea levels that need to understand what does this mean to their business or their enterprise or to the consumer on their terms. So explaining trust in terms of economic benefit. For an enterprise, it's largely a matter of either shared risk or risk transfer to reduce liability. That translates directly into cost. So think in terms of uh, aerospace industry. For them, intellectual property is key and their trade secrets. In terms of healthcare, it's personally identifiable information. In terms of energy mining and resources or the EMR sector, think about the value of their information in terms of, say, commodity prices or the ability of someone to know, say, their secret sauce for blending a mineral or something like that. These are extremely valuable pieces of information. And if the, I mean, information is everywhere, including on the mobile, it's in your pocket, you lose it, it needs to be governed somehow, it needs to be managed. So the risk is, it's just on the device, period. For the enterprise, uh, it, can, it can be presented and turned into a very, a very straightforward and fast path to identify, essentially identify a trusted, or to allow them to put trusted applications and services into place to balance and mitigate the risk. And that needs to be specific to each enterprise. So think in terms of finance and healthcare, do not speak the same language. What needs to be done is to present, them, to present solutions in a way that each of those enterprises or the verticals, that they understand in their terms. So it's, we can't just say it's about dollars here or dollars there. It's about what does the loss of 50 million, you know, 50 million records on people mean or the information that could be obtained from that. Let's go beyond BYOD and think about anything. So we're heading into the world of wearables. If you have something like a pair of glasses that now have cameras or microphones, the ma so the, what becomes critical is the management of all of those devices and the information that they may store or convey. So we think of anything as being a storage element or a communications element. The TEE can facilitate basically trust and manageability for all of those. I would go beyond mobile, I'd go beyond say mobile devices as we think of them today and move forward. The number is going to grow explosively. I mean, the landscape, the mobile device is a starting point because we're here now. It can even go backwards to the desktop. I mean, this is entirely possible now. I mean, so I think, you know, I can think of probably 10 reasons. Let's start with one, multiple implementations offer diversity. So nature really likes having a really, really big gene pool. Different implementations essentially mean that the system becomes more resilient. Standardization fosters, com it fosters competition. It also fosters innovation in order to maintain a competitive lead. Innovation is a good thing because it keeps us all moving forward. If we stop, we have a problem. And also reduces cost as well. We have multiple implementations, then we force to diversify again on the services front. So it helps us move forward. I think nothing is great if it stagnates. Then you tend to grow, you know, things that grow stale don't survive. When I think in terms of standardization, it turns into software development, so basically development interfaces and APIs which immediately make it easier to you know, reduce costs in terms of portability, migration, choice. But, the stat, but in terms of APIs, you learn them once, you don't have to learn 50 different things. I think of crypto APIs, two is enough. 
You know, PKCS 11, know that one. It's got its warts and its problems and can be pretty obtuse in places. There's Cappy from Microsoft, does the same thing differently, but it's, you know, you think in terms of the two and that's great. I don't want to think in terms of 100. That's expensive. That's very expensive. So you think of somebody in an enterprise or an ISV that builds application for the enterprise. Um, some classes of APIs can be pretty arcane or difficult for them to get their head around. It's a very esoteric space. And what we've set out to do is basically package that and encapsulate that in a way in terms that the developers are already familiar with. So reduce their, reduce their learning curve and reduce their difficulty in terms of understanding all of the ins and outs and the details at one level by presenting them with something at another that they're already familiar with. So give it to them on the terms they understand, it's a key. And then simplify. This goes a long way to increase awareness and knowledge surrounding what the trusted execution environment presents. I'd say that's the, one of the largest contributions it can make is also presentations of the, of the ecosystem or the, you know, the various businesses and, and interests that are involved in this to show it's a large, a large community rather than one or, two, you know, one, or, one or two verticals trying to make a point. It's a, it, you know, it needs to evolve as an ecosystem, but this is presenting the, the awareness and education.